So I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8 audio interface. And if you want to know why I got rid of it and what I replaced it with, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about why I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8 audio interface and what the heck did I replace it with? Well. There are several reasons why I got rid of my audio interface, which I actually had for probably about two years now. So there's actually three reasons why I got rid of it, which we're going to go over in this video. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the audio interface that I replaced it with. So that's kind of the exciting part of the video. And before all that, I do want to give a shout out to Cuts Clothing, whose outfit that I'm rocking today, because honestly, music and fashion go hand in hand and they have been going that way ever since the creation of music. So, you know, whether you are a music artist, producer, or engineer, you need to be looking good and also comfortable in your outfits, and Cuts Clothing is great for music industry fashion. So, what I'm rocking today is the AO Curve Hem T and then the AO Joggers. Now, the AO Curve Hem T is made of their own PYCA Pro fabric. It's super soft, it's wrinkle resistant, which I love, and it keeps its fit. Now the AO joggers are made of their own Versa knit fabric. They're also wrinkle resistant. They have a slim fit, they're made to stretch, and they also keep their shape. Now, what's really cool about these is they come in this special packaging, as you can see on the screen here, and they come in this awesome box here, which has this cool little magnet that snaps into place as you open the box. And as you can see on the screen now, if you use the coupon code audio sourcer, you can get 15% off your order. And there's a link in the description below. All right, so now let's get into today's topic and let's talk about the first reason why I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8, which is... So the first reason I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8 is because, well, I am a PC user and this is not a PC friendly audio interface. So the way we connect it to a PC is we install the PCIe card that comes with it and we connect it via an HDMI cable. Now it will work with Thunderbolt, don't get me wrong, it does support Thunderbolt. Um, but the problem is that regardless, it's not expandable. You could only use one VRS8 with your computer. It's never expandable, all right? So on a Mac, you can, I believe, daisy chain the Thunderbolt ports, I think up to three of these. So you can have like 24 inputs. That's, that's a pretty solid, I would say, studio there. That's pretty good. Um, and you can use aggregate devices built into a Mac. That is not gonna work on a PC. Um, I can't even get this to show up in ASIO for all, which ASIO for all is kind of our, our cheap way on a PC of trying to do aggregate devices, which doesn't really work very well. But regardless, this interface does not even show up in it. Okay. So just to sum things up, the first reason why this interface to me is not very useful is because I can't expand it. I am stuck with just one of these on a PC. Okay. So not expandable. So that leads me to our second reason why I got rid of this, which is... So the second reason I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8 audio interface is because it has no ADAT connection and no possible way of connecting another audio interface to it. So you can't not only connect another VRS8 to it, you can't connect a third-party interface to it, like a Focusrite or Universal Audio, which sucks because you're pretty much stuck with one VRS8. So you get your eight inputs and that's it. If you had, you know, like a Focusrite and a Universal Audio that were both eight inputs, you can connect those together via ADAT and that gives you 16 there, okay? You can build upon, you know, different manufacturers that have ADAT connections, okay? And you can keep going and build up your studio. You cannot do that with a VRS8, you are stuck, okay? You have to go either completely the Slate VRS8 or you can go a bunch of different brands and build up your studio. So, hmm, what am I gonna go with here? Think about it there, okay? 
So that is definitely a huge, huge, huge drawback because at least on a Mac with the VRS8, you can get up to 24 because you can, you know, daisy chain them together. But on a PC, you're literally stuck with one VRS8, okay? So that leads me to our last and final reason why I got rid of my Slate Digital VSR8, which is... So the third and final reason why I got rid of my Slate Digital VRS8 audio interface is because I believe it's been discontinued. Um, there's no word from Slate that that is true. However, um, Sweetwater does list on their website, as you can see, that this product is no longer available and that this is only left up here for reference, okay? Nobody else is really selling this here, at least as a major company online, all right? You can get it on eBay, you can get it on some used sites, um, but yeah, um, that's kind of concerning, okay? Yes, they could be, you know, maybe out of stock, that's possible, but that's, I don't know. It seems to me like when Sweetwater puts that up here that we're not selling it, you know, that this is just here for reference, that tells me that's probably been discontinued because typically it would probably show, you know, out of stock, all right? So um, if it's discontinued, that typically says that, hey, we're probably not gonna be supporting this much longer and maybe we actually did something wrong or maybe we, could have made this a lot better than it was because that's the honest truth. This could have been made a lot better than it was. Um, it does have great preamps in it, has really low latency. There's a lot of good stuff about it, but you know, it wasn't well thought out, I think. And I think a lot of people do agree with that. So unfortunately that is, you know, what can I say? So that leads me to the last part of this video. You guys all wanna know what I actually replaced it with. So let me show you that now. All right, so this is what I replaced it with here. This is the Craneborn Audio 500R8 audio interface. Now, it houses eight 500 series modules here. So I have six of them blank right now. So what I put in here is I put the Camden series, which is from Craneborn. So these are actual uh, mic preamps here from them, um, which I think are pretty awesome sounding. So right now I'm just kind of figuring out what I want to put in here um, for mixing purposes. Um, but what's cool about this is that even though these are blank, you still get all of your eight line inputs on here. So you can plug, you know, like a guitar or whatever in here directly. So, yeah, so this is a pretty awesome interface here. So let me know if you guys want to know more about this and if you want me to do some actual videos on it, because this thing has been running rock solid in my studio for several months now. And I'm absolutely in love with it. And I can't wait to expand upon it here and just fill up these, you know, slots here with some more modules and they actually make an expansion box for this here too so i can kind of build upon this to my heart's content all right so hope you guys end up liking this video and if you did give it a thumbs up please subscribe so i make this content for you and hit that notification bell to have new videos coming out and if you enjoyed this video definitely check out my video on the top five best audio interfaces under 200 dollars. and with that being said until next video i'll see you guys later and peace out